In Algebra 1, Section 4 and 9, we're dealing with slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. Now, parallel lines means that the slopes are equal. They're going the same rate up and over, up and over, up and over um, at the same time. So because they're going the same rate, they're perfectly parallel and they'll never intersect. So parallel lines are equal slopes and they never intersect. Perpendicular lines intersect. They intersect in a certain way. Um, they intersect at a 90 degree angle, okay, perpendicular, so they don't just intersect, they intersect at a 90 degree angle, and their slopes, when you multiply them together, they equal negative 1. This is called um, negative inverse. So for example, if I have a slope of 1 two, over 2, if I go up 1 over 2, the opposite would be not just 2 over 1, but negative 2 over 1, okay? If I have a slope of um, negative 3, right, the perpendicular slope would be 3. This is the same thing as 3 over 1, so 1 over 3. And then it would be positive because this is negative. So it's the opposite sign and flip fraction. That's what perpendicular slopes look like. They, and they intersect again at a 90 degree angle. So number one wants us to identify which lines are parallel. So in order for us to do which lines are parallel, we need to make sure it's in the y equals mx plus b form. Okay, this is in the y equals mx plus b form, so is this. And in this, this is our slopes. Okay, so let's move this. Let's change this. 2x, 2x plus 3y. Okay, I want to move 2x to this side because I'm trying to isolate y. Again, what I'm doing is I'm making it to y equals mx plus b form. So 3y, this cancels out, equals, and I want the x in front, so negative 2x, and it's a positive 8, okay? That negative follows the 2x, it doesn't go with the 8, and I can't combine the 8 and the 2x together. And just like the last time, when I divide, I'm going to divide the whole thing. So this cancels out in y. So this becomes negative 2 over 3x plus 8 over 3. And I'm going to take that 3 and distribute to each term. And the term is broken up by a plus or negative sign. Okay? The next one, I have to, um, I have to distribute here first. So y plus 1 equals 3x and then 3 times negative 3, so it's negative 9. And then I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. y equals 3x minus 10. So we're looking for parallel lines. And parallel, again, has equal slopes. In this case, this doesn't match any of them. Oh, it looks like none of them are parallel. These were close, but this one's negative and this one's positive, so it's not the same. And this one is 3. Again, we're looking at just the M, so the numbers in front. So none of them, since none of them equal, we'll say none are parallel. That's unfortunate. I thought one was at least, but I guess not. In order for them to be parallel, it doesn't matter what their y-intercept is. And this one's 8 over 3. Um, it doesn't matter what their y-intercept is, but what does matter is their, uh, um, their m's. So let's look at the other one. The, the next one wants us to identify which lines are perpendicular lines. Um, so this, this one we're looking for uh, when you multiply them together, negative 1 or negative inverses. So this one, the slope, when there's no, uh, there was, there's no x value at all, the slope is undefined. Okay? Um, when there is an x, sorry, no. When there's no x value, the slope is 0. When there's no, when there's no uh, y value, it's undefined. And let me explain that. When we go back to the slope, 
a section, um, a y equals 3 means on the line, y is straight 3. Okay? No matter what x is, y will always be 3. So th that means it doesn't move up and down. So there's a zero slope. But on the other hand, x minus 2, I find negative 2 on x, and it goes straight up and down. And a vertical line, if you remember from the slope section, um, has an undefined slope. They're, they're not defined. So this is straight left and right, and this is straight up and down. Bec um, this one, the slope is 3, and this one, the slope is negative 3. If I do 3 times negative 1 third, or the slope is negative 1 third, if I multiply them together, right, 3 times negative 1 is um, negative 3. 3 times 1 is 3. So negative 3 over 3 is negative 1, right? So this is, these are perpendicular to each other, okay? And because y equals 3 goes straight up and, I mean, straight left and right, zero slope, and then x equals negative 1, 2 goes straight up and down, this then becomes perpendicular, to each other. So these two are perpendicular and these two are perpendicular. All right. Um, go ahead and write this down. And I have one more board for you, so write it down, pause it if you need to. Number three is telling us to write an equation in slope-intercept form uh, for the line that passes through 4, 10, and is parallel to the line y equals 3x plus 8. That is a mouthful. Basically, what it's asking you is to create an equation that goes through this point, but is parallel to yx plus 8. So um, let me illustrate that with you real quick, just so you can understand what that's saying. So if this is 8 right here, and you go up three, one, two, three, over one, down. If I, by the way, if I want to go backwards, I do the opposite. So if I, because the line continues this way, you know, um, I just do, since I went up three, the opposite would be down three. Since I went right one, the opposite would be right, I mean left one. So that's how I continue the line, even though it's, it's on this side. Because the starting point is always here, so um, sometimes you need a point on this side, that's fine. So here's the line, right? y equals 3x plus 8. That's this line right here. But what it's saying is, there is this, this line, 4, 10, right here. And of course, I don't have points, so I'm going to label it. 4, 10, um, it's probably higher because since that's 8, this is 4, 10. So they want you to ha find a line, 4, 10, that is parallel, so that means it's the same slope, but it goes through this point. That's what it's asking you to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I don't need anything from this equation except one thing, the slope. I don't need anything else. I need just this slope. Okay? Other than that, I need this point. This is my x and y. Everything else I can just ignore. So if my m is 3, and again, I, found, I said the m is 3 because it's the same slope. It's parallel, right? It's parallel to this line, so I know, the, only, the one thing I know is that it's going to have the same slope. And my point is going to be 4, 10. This is the information I need to use. Now I can just ignore. I need to create an equation with these two information. Now, I have my m for my equation, but what I don't have is my b. And remember from the last video, in order for me to find my b, I'm going to use 4 and 10. I'm not going to use it as a permanent. It's not permanently part of the equation. But I do know that at one time or another, um, it goes through this point. So one time or another, this point satisfies my x and y. So I'm going to plug it in just so I can find b. And the reason I do that is because I can't solve for b if I, ha if I, have, three, if I have two other missing variables. But if I plug in the variables, y for 10, 4 for x, and then, I, and then um, now I can find b, because now b is the only variable left. So this is 10 equals 12 plus b. I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. I end up with negative 2 equals b. So what this tells me is here's my m and here's my b. 
So now I have my equation. Y equals 3x minus 2. And what this equation is telling me is that starting from negative 2, I go up 1, 2, 3 over 1. This is my parallel line. And you're not going to have to graph it every time. I'm just using this to illustrate to you, okay? So what this, again, what this is saying is I'm looking, f uh, I have a line that goes through 410, but it's the parallels, the same slope as this line right here. So number four is very similar, except instead of asking um, to write an equation parallels, asking me to write equation perpendicular. I do the same steps. The steps are the same. The only thing is, instead of this 2 right here, this 2x, um, I'm not looking for parallel. So my m is not going to be 2, but my m is going to be parallel to 2. I mean, sorry, perpendicular to 2. And um, the easiest, I, I can do it one of two ways. I know if this is my m1 and I'm looking for my m2, and my m2 is the perpendicular one. What I know is when I multiply m1 times m2, okay, when I multiply them together, I get a negative inverse, which is negative 1. I know what m1 is. It's 2, right? So if I want to solve 2m2, m2, and that 2 is not for an actual variable that I have to divide or anything. It's just to represent this is my second slope, okay? Equals negative 1. If I want to solve for m2, I have to divide both sides by 2, my m2 would be negative 1 half, right? An easier way to do that is I can just take this, flip it, so instead of 2 over, uh, two over 1, I end up with 1 over 2, and I change the sign, negative 1. Or I can solve it this way. E either way, for my perpendicular slope, I can't just take it the way I did here. I have to actually find it. But now, once I find my m, which is negative 1 half, I do the same thing. I no longer need this. We're done. And I just focus on this. This is my x and y. And again, I'm looking for what letter? I'm looking for that b. And because I don't have that b, I'm going to temporarily plug in x and y. So my y is negative 1 equals my slope, which is negative 1 half, x, which is 2, plus my b. Now I can solve. Negative 1 equals negative 2 over 2 plus b. Negative 1 equals negative 1 plus b, and I add 1 to both sides. This gives me 0 equals b. Okay? So I can write this equation one of two ways. It doesn't matter which way. Um, I can do y equals my slope, negative 1 half x plus 0, or I, I don't have to even write the 0. If there is no slope, I'm assuming that it's 0. So equals, I'm not slow. There's no b. I'm assuming that it starts at the origin at b right here. So negative 1 half x. Okay? And again, this is an or situation. I don't have to have both. I just have to have one or the other. Right? So go ahead and write this down. Um, and try page 297, number 5 and 8, 297, number 5 and 8. And I will see you in class.